we were very much surprised when we got our first result because it was positive. We got a strong positive curve seen on the picture, as uh, you can see, and it was an immediate response very similar to the type we got on Earth with soils containing living microorganisms. We were very excited, but had to wait eight days until the experiment was completed before we can start the control experiment. Well, you can imagine the intense feeling when we loaded the instrument with the control sample, heated it to 160 degrees centigrade for three hours, let it cool, and zapped it with the radioactive nutrient. Well, nothing happened. There was a nil response. Right there, we could have gone home. This was the proof that everyone agreed to before the mission that was needed to say, yes, there are living microorganisms on Mars. But not so fast. Nothing ever goes as planned, and scientists are eternally skeptical, as they should be, and especially about such an important experiment which NASA had stated might be the most important experiment in the history of science if it detected living organisms on Mars. Doubts immediately began to arise, and we had to cope with these. Amongst the doubts, the strongest came when another experiment on Viking, called the Molecular Analysis Experiment, which was designed to identify the organic compounds everyone knew must be on Mars, just as on Earth, organic compounds were bombarding the planets, both of them, with comets, meteorites, and so-called interplanetary dust particles, which contain organic matter. That's how the Earth got its organic matter, from being bombarded from space. The same was undoubtedly true for its neighbor, Mars. So, our interest was in identifying those compounds on Mars, but the instrument, called the GCMS, not only did not identify any organic compounds, but it found none. Zero. It reported no organic matter. What a dilemma. NASA contemplated this, as did other scientists. How can you have life if you have no organic matter? It was decided there must be no life on Mars. There is some weird chemistry or physical effect that is mimicking life. No one doubted the results of the GCMS. Instead, they doubted the results of the label release experiment. Well, the first theory offered to explain away biology was that the label release response came from soil that had been activated by ultraviolet light. Because the ultraviolet light hitting Mars is many times as strong as that hitting Earth, since Mars has such a thin atmosphere. The theory was then, ultraviolet light would prevent any life from forming, and also would destroy all organic matter, and that would explain the results of both instruments. We were able, by some quick thinking, to destroy that theory. What we did was, one morning, on Mars, we sent the sampling arm out to a rock, which had been sitting around, undoubtedly, for hundreds of thousands, maybe tens of millions of years, and at dawn, we moved the rock and quickly took a sample of the soil under it and put it in our labeled release experiment. And lo and behold, we got the same result as we got with the samples we took from the surface of the planet in the broad daylight. And the control also was nil. So we clearly showed the effect could not be from ultraviolet light. But then other theories promptly sprang up. In all, in a short time, some 40 theories sprang forward to explain that our results were caused by chemicals or physical activations of some kind. We diligently spent three years trying to reproduce the results we got on Mars, trying to reproduce them in our laboratory without using microorganisms, but many different chemicals. Those are the ones proposed. We were unsuccessful, and we were able to show that 
none of the 40 proposals really pertain to our experiment. Nonetheless, despite publishing these results, the theories remained that A, there was no organic matter on Mars, and B, there was a strong oxygen covering the surface of Mars that killed life and destroyed organic matter. Uh, C, that uh, there was no liquid water on the surface of Mars. And then another uh, complaint was lodged that in one of the experiments that we did on Mars that was not part of the original program, not required, but that we added on as a scientific curiosity, was to see whether after the experiment had run its eight-day course and the curve of evolving gas had flattened, if we injected a second dose of nutrient, what would happen? On Earth, commonly, you would get a second response as the organisms got new food and started digesting it, producing more gas. When we did this on Mars, however, we saw about 25% of the gas that had already been produced disappear. It had obviously been reabsorbed into the soil. So the people who felt we could not have detected life immediately said, that's not the way things are with biology, therefore it must be a chemical, and the soil must be basic or alkaline. When it's wet, it reabsorbs carbon dioxide that had been emitted. Well, let's go down those objections. We already showed that the ultraviolet light could not have produced the experiment. I guess then it was the organic matter that remained the strongest objection. We showed in a number of studies that the GCMS was not nearly as sensitive as our label release experiment. In fact, the experimenter of the GCMS said it took three million microorganisms in his test to render a positive for organic matter. Remember, I told you our experiment could detect 10 microorganisms. So we were a million times as sensitive as the organic analysis instrument. And therefore, it, were quite, it was quite possible. Both instruments were right. We detected microorganisms, but they were in small numbers that could not be detected by the organic analysis machine. Further research showed that there were other problems with the organic analysis machine. And just recently, as I will explain in a minute, uh, it was impugned so that it no longer represents any threat to the results that the Viking labor release experiment got. Let's go to no liquid water on Mars. Actually, Viking itself indicated liquid water on Mars when during the rising day, the foot pad temperature rose and got to the freezing point of zero degrees centigrade and stopped rising for a while. This is indicative that ice is present, that when the melting point of ice is reached, the temperature does not keep rising because the energy of the increased temperature is used in melting the ice into water. And this is a signature for liquid water. That occurred. And even though we published that, it was not widely uh, recognized. So my son, who by this time was a PhD physicist, and I produced a paper showing that on the basis of thermodynamic theory, there must be liquid water in the soil of Mars, particularly and especially under the ice, which is shown in the photograph taken at the Viking 2 landing site. 